Welcome to Think Tech on OC16, Hawaii's weekly newscast on things that matter to tech and to Hawaii. I'm Jay Fidel. And I'm Elise Anderson. In our show this time, we'll cover the 14th annual PRIMO, the Pacific Risk Management Ohana Conference. PRIMO is the premier conference for leaders interested in protecting island communities from natural disasters. PRIMO began in 2003 to enhance communication and collaboration among organizations involved in disaster risk in the Pacific area. Since then, PRIMO has become a consortium of local, national, and regional organizations committed to strengthening the resilience of the Pacific community to climate and weather-related hazards. It's the premier conference for those interested in protecting Hawaii and the Pacific Islands from natural disasters. It has more than 100 members, including emergency and medical organizations, government agencies, universities, and planning institutions. Every year, PRIMO gathers a broad group of scientists, policymakers, and leaders from agencies like NOAA, FEMA, and USGS to compare notes and to collaborate on protecting our coastal communities. Its theme this year was Journey to Resilience, Creating Value Through Partnerships. It was focused on protecting our coastal communities and sharing information and best practices among participating organizations. Visiting dignitaries included the Prime Minister of Tuvalu, the former President of Kiribati, high-level leadership from FEMA, the Lieutenant Governor of American Samoa, and Honolulu Mayor Kurt Caldwell. In fact, 200 participants came to PRIMO, including a number of heads of state, leaders of business, nonprofit, and environmental groups, to learn from each other, to network and make connections, and design action plans to make their respective organizations more resilient. These action plans have to be far-reaching if life, property, safety, and health are to be preserved in the event of a natural disaster. This is no small task, and PRIMO provides meaningful opportunities for that collaboration. The conference had dozens of speakers, keynotes, sessions, and working groups led by distinguished leaders, scientists, and experts. There were also displays, demonstrations, training sessions, field trips, and outside activities for attendees. There were updates on climate change, hurricanes and sea level rise, community vulnerability, emergency communication, damage assessment, emergency evacuation, health security, and other aspects of disaster response and recovery. There were talks by meteorologists and weather scientists, officials from NOAA, FEMA, USGS, the Hawaii Emergency Management Agency, formerly Civil Defense, the National Disaster Preparedness Training Center, and other experts, policymakers, and stakeholders. Among other notable presentations, there was a talk by Anneli Sopoaga, the Prime Minister of Tuvalu, on adaptation to climate change and sea level rise. And this year, Primo presented a free community night to help the public understand more about getting prepared. There were talks about disaster planning and recovery and about ameliorating the risks with insurance. 500 people showed up. This coverage in diversity and the learning and collaboration that comes with it is what makes Primo work. Only by bringing the Pacific community together can we make our lives more resilient against these threats. Yes, scientists and policymakers should work hard to protect us. They tracked the storms we had last year and showed how Hawaii somehow managed to avoid being hit. We can only hope we'll have the same luck this year. Remember, the hurricane season has already begun, 
and will run until September. We want to focus on helping Hawaii and its neighbors get ready for what will likely be increasing numbers and severity of storms in the future, said Dr. Carl Kim, co-chair and speaker at the conference and director of the National Disaster Preparedness Training Center. My name is Carl Kim. I'm an urban planning professor at the University of Hawaii and I direct the National Disaster Preparedness Training Center, which is one of the partners uh, with PRIMO, the Pacific Risk Management Ohana. This is our annual event. Uh, we have a, a, a big gathering uh, once a year where we have a conference. We bring in a bunch of speakers from all over the world, a bunch of uh, people who are involved with doing research, uh, policy makers, emergency managers, others who are interested in uh, disaster risk reduction and, and resilience. And so we gather every year to share information. We have some training workshops that are going on at the same time. And, and, and then this year we're also having a community night uh, as well too. We've opened up Primo uh, to the community. And so we'll have some booths and exhibits and demonstrations and then some panel discussions and uh, I, I think there will be special lectures on uh, topics like hurricane insurance. Uh, another topic is on uh, climate adaptation and sea level rise. Uh, strategies that you can um, take to make your homes, your uh, communities more resilient against different types of natural hazards. One topic that we're we're doing, uh, the, the National Disaster Preparedness Training Center, is on social capital. I think people know what economic capital is and increasingly about uh, natural capital, but we're also doing a panel on social capital. How is it that people bond or link or f form networks and, uh, and, and then help each other before, during, and after disasters occur? And we think that that's an important uh, topic, particularly in Hawaii. We're, we're among the most isolated and remote places in, in the world. If this all sounds familiar, it's because ThinkTech covered Primo last year. And we've had a number of talk shows with the people from the National Disaster Preparedness Training Center. I'm Duke Oishi. And I'm Sachi Sloma. We'll cover Primo, the Pacific Risk Management Ohana. No, it's not a beer. It's a really important conference. We talked with Carl Kim, a UH planning professor and visiting expert, Dr. Mark Keim, in our studio and at the Primo conference at the convention center last week. First, we had this great talk show in our downtown studio with Carl Kim, a professor of planning, and Mark Keim, a doctor, formerly of the Centers for Disease Control. Dr. Keim has made it his mission to educate the public about the community medical issues that arise in the course of these disasters. Today, tomorrow, begins this extraordinary conference, this PRIMO conference, uh, which stands for Pacific Risk Management Ohana. Uh, the I is, the I is, uh, it's a silent I. Well, it's, a, it's, it's an silent. implied it's a, yeah, I. Right, right, the I right, right. It must be implied in all right. these things. Okay. It is a vowel. <laughs> it is a vowel. How much for a vowel? Right. <laughs> but you're both involved in it. Carl, you're the co-chair of the program. Uh, and Mark, uh, you are one of the keynote speakers. Well, this is the 13th year of um, the, the conference, and uh, Primo is comprised of uh, a number of different agencies involved in disaster risk and uh, reduction. For this conference, I'm talking about it in relationship to climate change. And, uh, you know, we're, we expect that climate change is, well, it already is. It's already increasing the number of what we call extreme weather events, so uh, floods, hurricanes, um, landslides, and so on. And uh, so what we're seeing now is increasing number of health effects from those as well. In addition to those extreme weather events, we can expect increased areas of malnutrition in the Pacific. We can expect changes where diseases normally are in one area for them to move to other areas. And we can also expect some of those diseases that we already know in the developed world, like strokes and heart attacks, for those to increase because of these kinds of uh, changes in our climate. Well, Jay, as you know, I'm an urban planning professor at the University of Hawaii, and I also direct the National Disaster Preparedness Training Center. It's a FEMA Homeland Security funded center at the University of Hawaii, which uh, develops and delivers training courses on natural hazards, on coastal communities, uh, on islands and territories. We have a big emphasis on weather, and because we have these two storms in the Pacific, I thought we would talk about these mm -hmm. two storms, and, and so I have uh, uh, our lead meteorologist, um, Owen Shea, and uh, Tom Bedard, who's also uh, on our meteorology team as well, too, and so okay. uh, that's why we're here. Lion Associates is actually a civil and environmental engineering company, um, but they have a deep reach in Hawaii and the Pacific. 
So one of their main things, their motto of their business or their, their mission is improving island life by weaving art, science, and culture in everything that they do. So culture being the, the most important part because wherever they go, you know, the cultures are different, the way they do things are different. So they really try to get to know the people that they serve. Um, one of the things that they do in the Pacific is um, they work on a lot of islands and atolls. And when they do that, they, they're seeing the effects of climate change, sea level rise. Um, so one of the things that they wanted to um, expand, I guess, in their, in their company was this community part of it. And, you know, it was really kind of unknown, like, how they were going to do it. They knew they wanted to do it, but they just didn't know how. So this opportunity came up last year um, where National Disaster Preparedness Training Center, which is actually out of the University of Hawaii, directed by Carl Kim, um, wanted to do a Pacific-specific campaign for disaster preparedness within the community. And so we got wind of it. Um, you know, we, we put in a proposal for it, and there were other companies that, that went for it too, but um, we got the contract to, to do this campaign. And it was actually a, um, a very perfect uh, partnership because it kind of fell in alignment with the, the company's work that they do. And instead of taking care of people, you know, civil engineering is all about infrastructure and roads and all that kind of stuff. Well, they take care of things like at the point of disaster or after, you know, in the recovery phases. But now we can do something beforehand to educate people. Hawaii, through climate change and otherwise, is increasingly exposed to really bad weather. Uh, and last year we had record number of uh, hurricanes, and this year may be the same. Uh, so this all drove Ray to write an article for uh, Civil Beat, which appeared in the Civil Beat edition yesterday. And welcome to the show, Ray. We are looking forward to talking with you. Thanks for inviting me, Jay. So can you first, can you summarize your article yesterday, because that's what we could, should track on today. Well, after nearly a decade or more after Katrina, uh, Hurricane Katrina, which was one of the most devastating hurricanes to ever hit uh, the United States in uh, the Louisiana Gulf Coast and other states uh, in the South, um, there's been a lot of research uh, by FEMA, by academic researchers, and one of the findings that came about is the disproportionate impact of such a disaster on the elderly. As last year, we had a chance to walk the floor at Primo to see what was going on and to talk to some of the speakers and attendees. This is a 14th annual meeting of the Pacific Risk Management Ohana, a group of risk management providers, disaster risk reduction and resilience group. That, uh, we've been together 14 years. We don't have any authorization, but we're the coalition of the willing and what you see are a bunch of dedicated people who have been doing this for a long time. Resilience wasn't really part of our vocabulary back then, but we, what we recognized was that there's something that we needed to do as a region together, and that collaboration among all of us is the way in which we can do things a lot better because, as you know, the Pacific is pretty big. It's the largest uh, ocean in, in, in the world and the numbers of islands and people there are, are, are various and very diverse. But in order to get things done, you know, we, we often think that we're not on the radar, but in order to get that radar, it's that bringing together our voices to make sure the voices are heard and the issues are addressed. And that's how it got started. There are a couple of focal points. One, what you're gonna hear, especially tomorrow morning, is about the issue of relocation. So the impact of climate on these vulnerable communities, you know, increased erosion, um, sea level rise, the fact that um, in places like Kiribati, we'll be hearing from President Tong um, on Wednesday, as well as from Pre uh, Prime Minister Sopoanga from Tuvalu, that not just sea level rise, but normal tides. High tides are actually flooding their islands and ruining their crops. Uh, in Kiribati, they have life preservers in their hotel rooms. Uh, the first floor of the uh, hospital often floods. So it's those types of issues that we're going to be talking about, but also in terms of resilience in general, what are those things that we can do to prepare our communities to become more resilient, resilient from uh, disasters like hurricanes, tropical cyclones, flooding, but also the longer term impacts of, of climate and how do we think forward uh, to, to develop these best practices for the future. As the um, coastlines here in Hawaii are eroding, as they are on shorelines all around the Pacific, as sea level rise continues to increase. So we're seeing more advanced and faster coastal erosion. And this is a 3D 
visualization tool that allows you to move the sand. Can I go ahead and show you? So if we if we see coastline here erode, it's gonna water is gonna come in and start rising, and the inundation zones are going to increase, especially from high tides and storm surges. As you move the sand, it's gonna create a 3D representation of elevation and terrain. Also, at the same time, this program has what it will call make a rain. Your hand will act as a cloud, and you can see the water running off. So we use this as an educational tool to teach the kids to learn about uh, topographic map, elevation, uh, watershed runoff, and everything that happens on the land, it will have an impact on the ocean. There's a lot of commonalities between tribal people, indigenous people, there's a lot of different, um, there's differences, but at the same time, we're all the same. We all come from our elders that have a lot of knowledge to teach us. We all come from a lot of areas that things are not how they used to be, but if we listen to our elders, we can put things back in harmony, not only with ourselves and the balance that we have within ourselves and our communities, but also with, in my field, in emergency management, I'm seeing an increase in disasters in my own lifetime, and that's scary. Um, so it's good that this is happening. I see all the people here, and I'm really excited to see all the different, uh, different communities come together, not just one community, not just coastal, not just tribal, not just um, a state or states. It's, it's, it's everybody, and that's what I'm seeing right now. All in all, it was an excellent conference, addressing the most pressing questions facing the Pacific community. How will we conduct ourselves when we are hit with a disaster? Are we ready and prepared? Do we know what to do? The questions are not rhetorical. The effects of climate change will get only worse in the next few years, perhaps much worse. Seven storms are already predicted for Hawaii this season, and any one of them could change our lives and community forever. This is serious. We ignore such things at our peril. It's critical that we assess the impacts we will suffer and that we heighten our awareness, marshal our resources, embrace our expertise, and coordinate our agencies to properly survive them. Primo is an essential player in protecting our community from the enormous risks ahead, and we applaud its efforts. If you want to know more about Primo, see the site below. You can also check out the work of the National Disaster Preparedness Training Center at ndptc.hawaii.edu. And now, let's take a look at our ThinkTech calendar of events going forward. ThinkTech broadcasts its talk shows live on the internet from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. on weekday afternoons. And then we broadcast our earlier shows all night long. And some people listen to them all night long. If you missed a show or you want to replay or share any of our shows, they're all archived on demand on thinktechhawaii.com and YouTube. For our audio stream, go to thinktechhawaii.com slash radio. Visit thinktechhawaii.com for our weekly calendar and our live stream and YouTube links, or better yet, sign on to our email list and get the daily docket of our upcoming shows. ThinkTech has a high-tech green screen video studio at Pioneer Plaza. We invite you to come down, see our studio, and join our live audience. Contact me, jay at thinktechhawaii.com. 
Be a part of our civic engagement and raise your awareness on ThinkTech. Go ahead, give us a thumbs up on YouTube or send us a tweet at ThinkTechHI. We want to know what you're thinking and how you feel about current issues and events affecting Hawaii. We want you to stay in touch with us and we want to stay in touch with you. Let's think together. Did you know that ThinkTech is now broadcasting 30 live talk shows a week? Check them out. Here are some of the great shows and show hosts we've added over the last few months. Join us and raise your awareness about the critical changes affecting and taking place in Hawaii. See what's going on, be a part of the conversation, and check us out at thinktechhawaii.com. Want to speak out about a community issue? ThinkTech invites you to come down to our studio and make a video at our speaker's corner. Contact me, Jay, at thinktechhawaii.com. Want to join the conversation? Now you can call in and be included in our live shows. While you're watching any of our live shows, just call our hotline, 415-871-2474, and you can pose a question or make a comment. We look forward to getting your call. And now, here's this week's ThinkTech commentary. Aloha, I'm Marian Sasaki with this ThinkTech commentary. I speak today to the millennials. You want, you need a seat at the table. It's time. Your generation, much maligned as entitled, distracted, and privileged, is facing a monumentally desperate time in our country's history. I, for one, think you're more than up for the task of transforming a society and the planet that has been scarred by greed and mistreatment, but not if you don't participate. In the 1980 election, people could not bring themselves to vote for Jimmy Carter. I remember the times well. But then we got Ronald Reagan, the architect of so much of the agenda that has plundered our country. Sitting it out is not an option, so you must join the center-left of the Democratic Party and support Hillary Clinton, and continue the pressure to advance your agenda. Don't forget, all through her first term, Hillary will be con considering her second. You will have quite a bit of leverage moving her administration in the direction you would like to see it go. As noted intellectual Mark Lessero has said, it is useful to keep in mind that FDR ran as a centrist Democrat in 1932. It was a hugely involved citizenry, strong unions, and a very strong socialist presence which shifted him to the left, basically by giving him no other choice but to make the concessions he did. So to the millennial citizenry I say, speak out by voting in local elections and for congressmen and senators. Speak out when the time comes to nominate a Supreme Court justice. Hold the people who hold up the process responsible and organize and vote them out. Continue the revolution and take back the country from forces that would privatize and monetize institutions and privileges that belong to the people. I understand Hillary Clinton seems an unpalatable choice, and I think in many respects she is responsible for that. But I've been watching since the early 1990s, even before. And you should remember she was on the front lines of health care, child care, and women's issues. Because of that, she has been abused and maligned by the right at every turn. So understand when you say that you could never possibly vote for a candidate like Hillary Clinton, she is in part imperfect politician, but to a large extent she is also a construct of the right. She has sustained decades of slander and spin seeking to portray her as an avaricious monomaniac set upon advancing her own agenda. I do not think that is so, and I think both of the Clintons have given more to the country than they have taken. She is not without fault, but no one of us is. I, too, was a Bernie Sanders supporter, and I always thought it was amusing that someone who was clearly such a vestige of the 60s idealism would be the one embraced by this generation. I cannot blame millennials for supporting him. Very little good has come out of the administrations in the ensuing 45 or so years that baby boomers, and I am one, have been rooting the country. We have dismantled the institutions of our country and plundered them, leaving little left for our descendants. 
Hillary Clinton is an imperfect leader, without a doubt. But with her, we will travel in the right direction. She is our fellow traveler, and we must join her on the road. And perhaps when we come to a fork in that road, you, the millennial generation, our new leaders will make better choices than some have in the past. Hillary Clinton needs you. Do not abandon her in our country. Now is the time to stand up for yourselves and for what is right and continue marching into the future. You are our hope. Mahalo. I'm Marianne Sasaki with this Think Tech commentary. We'll be right back to wrap up this week's edition of Think Tech. But first, we want to thank our underwriters. Okay, Elise, that wraps up this week's edition of Think Tech. Remember, you can watch Think Tech on OC16 several times every week. Can't get enough of it, just like Elise does. For additional times, check out OC16.tv. For lots more Think Tech videos and for underwriting and sponsorship opportunities on Think Tech on OC16, visit thinktechhawaii.com. Be a guest or a volunteer, a producer or an intern, and help us reach and have an impact on Hawaii. Thanks so much for being part of our Think Tech family and for supporting our open discussion of tech, energy diversification, and globalism in Hawaii. You can watch this show throughout the week and tune in next Sunday evening for our next important weekly episode. I'm Jay Fidel. And I'm Elise Anderson. Aloha, everyone. Oh, oh.